Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another crypto video and my question of today is do you think we are in a bull run or a bear run? And the reason I am asking is because I noticed the comments are so divided right now. But again, guys, make sure you press that like button also because it makes the video perform just a little bit better. And I'm trying to hit 150,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And I think the likes in some strange way actually help for it. All right, guys, I have confirmed on this channel that I freaking truly believe that we right now are in a very bullish period. Now, I have explained quite often, I think by now, that this is the cycle. First, Bitcoin pops off, and then it basically goes into smaller and smaller sorts of altcoins. But it usually goes in this exact fashion, where after a cycle is over, a lot of money goes from these crazy small altcoins back into Bitcoin, which then again also goes back into fiat. But this is basically the cycle. Fiat to Bitcoin, Bitcoin to large, large to small, small back to Bitcoin, and then Bitcoin out of everything. Right? And, and when you basically... Do as much research as I do. You also know that when, when you see these things, you know how they are. You know, and I've been calling it out on the channel here for a couple of times. This is the first time that Bitcoin broke out of this descending triangle. I guess let's just show it actually here out of the descending line. I would say, I guess the resistance. Let's just show it here. Right. Let's show it without much hassle. This is the first time that Bitcoin broke out since freaking April when it hit all time high. We have tried once, but this is the first time that we actually did it correctly, so to speak. And so, guys, I am so extremely bullish. And I, I find it really strange how that many people are laughing at me in the comment section saying, oh, yeah, but XP hasn't done anything. Oh, yeah, but Ethereum hasn't done anything. Oh, yeah, but it's going to come right back down. Even if it does, even if, you know, let's say the hypothetical is true that... This is just a one-time off. What we are witnessing now, right now has a higher probability following logic of succeeding and pulling through and going to an all-time high, if not higher. Because this is the first time that we got such a bullish breakout. And it's a really clean one as well since April of 2021 when Bitcoin was at all-time high. Understand that, please, guys. So once more, if you look at the numbers, usually Bitcoin goes first and then altcoins go. So it is not crazy either that XRP, for example, or some of the other alts haven't popped off like crazy, even though I've been saying and shouting that alts have broken out of the um, bullish flag. Basically, it's a continuation pattern that showed a bullish influx, then a basically a flag and now it's breaking back out. Classical pattern in one of the most beautiful ways ever. XRP is still building and it still hasn't gotten to the pump that we would like to see. But sometimes these beautiful things take time. And again, it's not a bad thing though, right? You want to make sure that these rises and specifically the, the big pump that we get is a solid one as well. We don't want it to be over too soon. And so all this building up, I think it has probable cause. Now, having said that, I just saw a couple of interesting analyses. Uh, one of them being this right here. This person, Trading Shot, who's pretty well known, predicted in February of 2020 that Bitcoin basically do good for about 600 more days. And again, you can see the end was about... A couple of days ago, basically this week is the end of the bull cycle in his analysis. And it's kind of funny if you kind of look back because this was just before we made a new kind of low for Bitcoin and for a lot of altcoins. And the predicted time zone is now also when we started popping back off. So let's check it out. If you check out, you can see, I mean, in terms of his expectation, it was kind of correct because if you look at the halfings and you look at the movement, it is the moment that we broke out of the halving, basically, that things went insane. So from that perspective, he is definitely correct, and it definitely looks quite juicy. However, where I think it's kind of odd is in the sense that he called this the bottom in 2018. And again, the majority of us, when we look at the crypto market, we consider this 2020 area to be the bottom. That leads me to wonder, what exactly is a bull cycle? What exactly is a bear cycle? It's rather difficult. A lot of people said, okay, from April, or I should say April, May, up to about here, July, this was the bear cycle. Again, if you kind of zoom in, this was a bearish cycle from all the way down there all to right here. Others say, no, it's a bear cycle until you break all-time high. So it's going to be from this point in April all the way until we hit that point, which has, by the way, been more than six months by now. 
Some say no, it's until you get a bottom where the trend reverses, which is also logical. But when exactly is the trend quote unquote over? Is this, for example, a bullish trend or is it only a bullish sort of trend when you beat all time high? So is this you know, exactly how does that all work? And the opinions are so divided about that, leaving it also kind of difficult to really tell people whether or not a bull cycle is there, a bear cycle, because yeah, was this just a bear cycle that we witnessed then? Was this an entire bear market? Or or do we consider this still to be part of the bull market until it is over? So if we, for example, hit an all-time high, the bull market started in March of 2020, for example, and right now it's just continuing on, or is this a completely different cycle? It matters, but it's pretty difficult to pinpoint it exactly. And again, people come back to cycles all the time. The problem with cycles in a certain way is that people start relying on them too much, thinking, Oh, okay, yeah, Bitcoin is going to end because it did it last time like this. Or da, da, da. The only cycle I firmly believe in is the cycle of the alts and market cycles in the sense that we will see a, let me show a good example here, a, a movement like this, right? A market cycle in, in general, basically, we will see movement like this. What I do not really believe in too much is that people can predict it so many years up front, basically. It's same thing as, as people in, in macroeconomics trying to predict conjunctural switches, basically, or shifts. It's not really possible. Some people say it is. I really personally don't think so. And it's the same thing as predicting the great market crash five years before it happens. That is so, so freaking difficult. That's also why I find these analyses so difficult to uh, you know, get my foot behind. Uh, now, to kind of come back to XRP, I firmly still think that an all-time high this year is very feasible, very possible. I also think that right now we have some key and very important price action going on. Is this going to set the president for the next couple of weeks, maybe? But right now you can see, per okay, guys, look at this. We got some confirmation as well. I'm buying XRP right now as we speak, right now as we speak, right now as we speak. I've already been shouting this for a couple of weeks, but this is so extremely bullish. People aren't getting it. It's so extremely bullish. If it goes bad, that's the, 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 the odd one out, basically. That's such a small chance. It can happen, but a small chance. It is way more logical to be extremely bullish right now. And people are laughing at us in the comment section. But guys, if you understand what I am saying, make sure you press that like button. Because even though we're going to be wrong sometimes, right? Right now, it just doesn't make sense for the market to shift like crazy. And if it does, I'm calling out some crazy manipulation to some degree. I'm not saying then we made the right choice because obviously we should have known. huh? But everything, every single thing is pointing towards the top. What's going on? All right. Brad Gollinghouse said over on his Twitter, despite a unique set of challenges this year, each quarter has topped the one before. Incredibly proud of the team at Ripple for forging ahead and getting it done. Congrats to Team Ripple. What I have to say about this one is Ripple didn't even notice they were getting sued. Well, they did, but Ripple's progress is actually still going insane. If you look at the partnerships, look at the pace and look at the fact like um, Ari, for example, showed that Ripple's stock prices only kept going up. In reality, it's more so on the front end that Ripple looks to be doing bad. But in reality, the numbers are actually quite good. The partnerships are actually quite good. And people are putting up this notion like, oh, price is everything. Price doesn't go up. This, that, this, that. Price isn't everything. Ripple is making insane progress. And right now, what we are witnessing, if you ask me, is a buildup. XRP hasn't hit its all-time high, which I think is kind of odd. But I think it mostly has to do with the fact that people are kind of hesitant with the Ripple v. SEC loss. But also, Ripple has been building so many partnerships behind closed doors. It's all happening in the back end. You're not really hearing too much of it. Yet, it's happening. People are thinking, oh, XRP is sitting still, this, that, this, that. It isn't. It really isn't. That's just what you're thinking. Again, if you ask me. Uh, then, a very interesting thing I just read. The XP Ledger transactions can now be initiated offline, or at least there's been a proposal for it. What is XPOP? Well, XP Labs showed on Twitter, proudly showing XPOP proof of payments as presented by Richard at the Apex Dev Summit. The XPOP generates an animated QR containing everything needed for offline XRP Ledger transaction proof for vending, casinos, and everything. And that is a crazy idea. So this proof of payment protocol can be utilized by a variety of devices that are not connected to 24 seven internet. For instance, it is compatible with vending machines and public transport. A device with XPOP integrated issues a QR code on its display or on paper. And while the holder of XPL based assets can repay it in an instant decentralized manner, XPL Labs representatives are sure that this innovation can give a proper spin to XPL retail adoptions flywheel. As XPL Labs aims to solve the chicken egg problem, we started with 100% focus at 
uh, end users and the ecosystem. And we feel that it's time to start focusing on retail as well. XPOP is one of those useful developments for future retail adoption and so far, or sorry, and so for the entire ecosystem. My own personal thought about that is like this. If you have an account somewhere, for example, a card, that card does not need to have a lot of internet access when you're actually spending only kind of to confirm and to yeah to confirm I guess twice beforehand and afterwards. What I mean is if you have a card and the card knows there's 100 XP on there, you can spend it, which basically gives the card a ticker like, hey, you've sent something. Even though it cannot send the money actually, it does note you have sent it. And so you can spend at maximum 100 because that's the card, uh, card balance. And again, it can just internally kind of knock that off of the 100. And only once you get the internet for real, basically, it, it does the final um, payoff where the, the, you know, the deduction is actually made basically. It's a pretty cool idea. At least I've been thinking about that too. It sounds pretty damn juicy. So here's again, a little bit of a further explanation. This is absolutely awesome. Using animated QR codes, the vending machine needs no network connection to verify the proof of a transaction has been made. Yeah, it looks pretty juicy. Then 110 countries are exploring CBDC at some stage, says the IMF managing director. Again, I'm pretty bullish on that. Mark Cuban says NBA fans prefer paying with Dogecoin because Bitcoin is an appreciable asset. <laughs> okay. According to Mark Cuban, people expect Bitcoin to go up in value and that is why they don't want to buy NBA tickets with it. Yet they want to use Dogecoin, which is kind of bad, right? Because they're basically saying, no, we prefer Dogecoin because that coin ain't going nowhere. I, was kind of, I find it kind of funny. U.S. Justice Department announces launch of National Crypto Enforcement Team. This is basically to look for, out for those crypto scams for, for a good part. Um, we've talked about this before, how they've been planning it, but right now they're making some extra steps towards it and a new force has basically been made for it. And then Bitcoin inflows show institutional investors are back on the bull train. We'll talk about this a little bit more, I think tomorrow or something like that, because I have a lot of stuff to talk about, guys. But I want to quickly get this video out to you guys as soon as possible, as things are so extremely bullish. And again, if I had to make a choice, XRP looks poised for greatness right now. Bitcoin had a perfect retest. We've been talking about it. Things are looking juicy, guys. Really, they are. It's, it, there's no denying it. And if we go down, I will gladly accept it as a, as a, as a kind of a... Maybe a gift to buy more because I'm, I'm a dip buyer, as you guys know. And I will, of course, always say we were kind of wrong. Then again, it's the way of the market. You should always, you should never underestimate the market, basically, and knowing you can always go back down. But the logical way is up right now. Thank you guys all for watching this video. Hopefully, you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you press the like button and subscribe. And make sure, make sure, make sure, as I said before, that the like button is a little blue or, or yeah, I think it's blue, right? Make sure you make sure you make it blue. It just helps the video perform a little bit better. All right. Adios amigos.